Hi, part of the power of ArcGIS and raster data is that we can create raster density maps or interpolated maps from limited or a lot of ArcGIS point data. We're going to look at a couple examples here. We don't cover this too much in detail in Geography 3435, the GIS class, but we cover this a lot more in detail in 4010 Applied GIS in my graduate courses here. I'm going to talk about an introduction to density maps and created interpolated maps here. I have two GIS uh, data layers here. One's called deer data and you can see what it looks like here. These are all deer vehicle collisions in the state of North Carolina in 2010. You can see I have about 21,000 points right here. A whole lot of data and when we look at it at a number of different scales, here's the state scale, here's even at a county scale here for Durham, it's just a bunch of dots. I want to create something useful for this. We can do some um, descriptive, uh, descriptive spatial statistics on these, or we can group these by county or some so other sort of enumeration unit, but I just want to create a density map for this and give an idea as to what is the density of deer vehicle collisions throughout the state. Another GIS data layer here is that I, I, that I have is air now data. This is particulate matter data. I have about 35 stations throughout the state here, so you can see my 35 stations, and these are PM, particulate matter monitoring stations, for 2.5 microns. You can see my minimum value, my maximum value, and my average values that are taken throughout the state over an 11 month period or so. Very interesting here, they range from 11 all the way down to 7 or so. And what I want to do is, these are the only PM monitoring stations, but I want to go through and compute areas for here, or here up in Stokes County, or Rockingham County, or somewhere in Chatham County where we don't have monitoring stations. So we can create, we can interpolate or extrapolate in some cases, limited amount of data to include an entire data set here. The first thing that I'm going to do is create a density map here. Okay, there's just a lot of dots here. This is really overwhelming for the average map viewer here. So some of the things that we can do here, I can go to my spatial analyst tools under density, I can click on point density right here. And you can see my input features are going to be my deer data. Okay. My population field is going to be none. My cell size, well I can specify my cell size. I might specify it, since we're looking at the entire state, I'll probably set it at maybe, I don't know, 2640 feet. Okay, and I can click on circle right here. Circle, what I'm going to do in this dot density map is, it's going to, much like a neighborhood operation, it's going to go through and create, look for a radius of 32,819 or whatever I specify feet around a particular cell and then calculate the density in number per square mile for this particular cell and we'll move to the next cell and the next cell and the next cell and the next cell as we go in 2,640 foot increments throughout the entire state. Okay. And you can see some of the input parameters that I have here, but I like working with circle here. And you can change these radii, neighborhood operations that you want here, and even the output cell size. But keep in mind, if I change this to like 30 feet or something like that, we're really going to overwhelm our ArcGIS here. Okay, I'm going to click OK. <coughs> we're going to go through and create this point density map. As you can imagine, running something like this takes a fairly long time, like we did with our neighborhood operations before. Okay, and this is what I have here. When I open it up here, now we can zoom in here, and you can see these darker areas right here are areas that have higher amount of deer density. If I just superimpose here, you can see there's a lot more dots here. So these darker areas here, when I create a 32,000 foot radius around it, and we can set this radius to be whatever we want. If we have our radius too big, it's not really going to be, it, we're going to include a lot more points. If we set it too small to like 100 feet or 200 feet, we're probably not going to capture a lot of areas. So we need to be pretty prudent about the, the radius here. I just went with the default that it gave me here. So when we uncheck these, we can get an idea as to the high deer vehicle collision areas along here. You can see right along Route 40 and Route 85 right here from, this is the, um, this is Hillsboro here to Burlington to Greensboro on our way down to Lexington here. Okay, so we have this dot density map here. 
Next thing I want to do is ex extrapolate and interpolate surfaces. I want to create an extrapolated surface where I want to know the value up here or the value down here. The only values that I do know are based on these here. So I can go down here. In here I can click on interpolation. Okay, there's a number of different interpolation techniques that I have. I have inverse distance weighting. Basically, the further away you go from a particular cell, because we're just going to create a, set, a raster surface like we just did, the further away you go, the less of an effect that a particular value is going to have on it. There's other interpolation techniques, and we'll look at one of those really uh, quickly in a bit. My input, input features are going to be my air now data. My Z field is going to be my average measurement value, because we also want to calculate that particular value, because it's going to have a call a Z field. Okay, It's going to have some sort of intensity. With the deer data that we looked at before, we didn't need a Z field because of the fact that one deer collision equals another. We're going to now look at areas that have higher PM readings than other particular areas when it contributes to air quality. Cell size we're going to leave the same. Power is going to be optional. We're going to select the number of points right here, but in environments here, we're going to have to do a couple things here. We're going to set our processing extent to be our North Carolina counties. Okay, and as we go further down here under raster analysis, I want to set something called a mask because I want to include all of North Carolina. If I were just to do this for this data set without taking these defaults, my extent and my mask is just going to be on my air now data, which goes from about Asheville to maybe Wilmington or so. It's not going to include any of these areas, the extent, which is the east, west, and the north, south. We're going to create, it's going to just be calculated within something which we call an envelope, which is the maximum and minimum of your XY values, and then your north-south values, and then your east-west values. Okay, so I'm going to click OK here. I'm going to click OK here. And we use a number of different techniques right here. And you can see in the bottom right-hand corner here what we have going on. Okay, and this is what we have. Okay, we can have here down in the bottom right here, we can see this, these white areas here are much, much higher values than the other areas here. And this is what we call inverse distance weighting here. As I move into a particular cell here, let's look towards high point. Okay, we can see our cells right here. Inverse distance weighting means that this monitoring station is going to have the most effect on these particular cells right here. As we move further and further away from these particular areas right here, these points are going to have more of an effect on it right here. So we can see these interpolated value or extrapolated values that we have right here. Very effective. But however, when we go through and create these interpolated maps, a lot of it's going to depend upon the values that we work with here. We can look at something called crying and splining. We're going to look at one called spline. Okay. Basically, the resulting smooth surface passes exactly through the points. Basically, we're going to fit these values so they're exactly uh, part of the model right here. With inverse distance weighting, we try to minimize the amount of distortion or what we call residuals that we have here. Okay, input surfaces, uh, for this, we're going to fit these lines exactly and ha try to have everything else figure itself out. So our inverse distance, uh, our input point features are going to be our air now data. Our Z field is going to be my average measure value. I'm going to keep the rest of these the same here. Okay, and we're going to see what it looks like. Okay, we're going to see our spline running. Okay, so we're working with two, the exact same data set, but you're going to see we're going to have different results here. Okay, and you can see what we have here. You see what I did wrong? I didn't set my input parameters and my mask parameters here. But when we click on this, versus this here, you can see some areas where they're high and they're also low here. You can also see the classes that we've created here are fairly different. Okay. I'm going to run this one more time, and actually I'm going to run something called Kriging, which is a different type of technique. Okay. One more time, I'm going to click on Kriging. Air now data, I'm going to do my average measure value. I'm going to take these input parameters also. Okay. And while I'm here, I'm going to set my environments. Hold up my raster analysis mask. That's going to be the extent of my counties. And I also want to make sure my 
processing extent is also for my MC cameras. Okay, so now we have IDW inverse distance weighting, and I believe we set that to be second order. We have Kriging, and now here uh, we have splining, and now we're doing a, a Kriging. A Kriging, I believe it is. Okay, I'm going to run the exact same thing here. this is what it looks like here a little choppier as you can see here okay but using the same exact data you know you can see we create a number of these different interpolated maps okay you can see what I mean here by these this envelope right here when we run this you can see the mistake here so we have our XY extent here and then we have our or our east west extent and then our north south extent this is what we call our envelope because I didn't specify otherwise here, when I set my uh, my mask to be the all of the cameras here, this is what we have here. Also, in my table of contents here, you can see the different classes that it created for it. So these are some very effective tools to create GIS data from very limited data, or in the other case, start to make some sense. And we have thousands and thousands of points. How we can make some sense from twenty thousand points and start to look at some density maps here.